We have made it to one of the must-visit spots here in Ontario, the beautiful Niagara Falls. Wow. <laughs> that was so awesome. <laughs> we are right here. Same falls, different side. Hey, Kaylin, any last words before we get completely inundated? For the past seven episodes, we've taken you on a cross-country Canadian journey, visiting well-known places like Jasper and Banff, and showing you the charm of smaller Canadian towns like Kenora and Sault Ste. Marie. And today, we're pitting Canada against the U.S. in the wet and wild battle of Niagara Falls. Which side will reign supreme? We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond with our three pups, Piper, Ella, and Scout. Each week, we bring you along with us to show you how to live like a local in every new state we visit. Well, we have made it to one of the must-visit spots here in Ontario, the beautiful Niagara Falls. I've never been here before, so I'm very excited. Howard has been here years ago, so it'll be fun to experience it together. And we found this great parking lot to leave the RV. It's only $10 Canadian. And so we're locking up, and we're gonna go drive the car a little bit closer so we can go see all the cool stuff. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. It's so cool. I'm, and I'm so excited that we're getting to maybe try this both on the Canadian side and the US side and kind of comparing between the two. That should be fun. <laughs> it's all kinds of water on the lens already. Oh my gosh. <gasps> That's the American side. That's the Canadian side. Wait till you see this. Oh. <laughs> Should we have worn our rain jacket? They actually give you rain jackets. That's a little tip um, when you go behind the falls. Okay, so this is absolutely as close as you can possibly park to the falls in Canada. And it is a little bit bougie because we're paying a lot more for this, but it's uh, $10 an hour maximum of $30 a day. But you can walk directly across the street and the waterfall is right there. When you have limited time, like we do, great spot. So we are doing two separate attractions here. This is Journey Behind the Falls is first. I love this. This is so unique and so different compared to the Niagara experience over on the US side. You get to go behind the waterfall. What? Uh, and then we're also doing a brand new um, the power station tour. Uh, this is a new museum that they open inside of the old power station. So combined, there is a combo ticket that for $37 you get both, uh, as opposed to it's about 40 and change if you don't. So a little bit of savings, but again, remember, Canadian dollars, so we're saving 20%. Journey Behind the Falls begins by taking an elevator ride 125 feet down into the rock, where you'll explore tunnels that were carved out over 130 years ago. So why are there tunnels here in the first place? Back when the Niagara Parks Commission was created in the late 1800s, they needed a way to safely allow tourists to experience the majesty of the increasingly popular Horseshoe Falls. Up until that point, makeshift ladders, staircases, and platforms proved to be dangerous to visitors, so the idea for a tunnel system was born and the first version opened in 1889. Today the tunnels have been improved quite a bit, but there's still a ruggedness with dripping water and the deafening roar of the falls. As you descend lower into the tunnel system, openings give you a glimpse at the incredible power of the rushing water as you stand safely behind one of the most powerful waterfalls in the world. What? And as you make your way out from behind the falls, it's time to suit up with your trusty poncho and head out to the famous vantage point of the lower observation deck. Wow. <laughs> that was so awesome. Awesome is definitely a great word for it. <laughs> it's I, wet. <laughs> awesomely wet. It is really cool. Uh, it's a totally unique perspective. Uh, there's nothing like it anywhere on the US side. <laughs> this is crazy! <laughs> we need little windshield wipers. <laughs> when we're in the lower observation area, you are right next to the falls. This is amazing. I had no idea what to expect. I just can't, the sheer power and force of this water is incredible. Cool.
Like any good tourist attraction, you exit through the gift shop, which is actually pretty impressive. We headed upstairs to Table Rock House to grab a bite to eat, and the views at this restaurant can't be beat. Wow. <laughs> With a view. Mmm. And a vegan power bowl, but you might notice something about it. It's definitely not vegan. I asked them if they could put chicken on it. <laughs> but it looks real good. We are right here. Look at that. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I did very little research, which I'm kind of glad because I feel like it gave me an opportunity to like just be wowed and not really know what was coming. But the two little alcoves where you go and you're truly behind the waterfall, I was like, oh, I can't see anything. Like, I don't know why I thought I would be able to see anything, <laughs> but it's just like rushing water. It's incredible. Yep, now we're gonna walk over and do our tour of the old power plant for Niagara. Okay, we're in. Let's go learn about some power <laughs> and some water. <laughs> Caitlin is highly accurate. This is Ooh, power and water. Yeah. This is literally how it works. There you go. Water enters. It flows down, spinning the turbine. Voila. When the Niagara Power Station first opened in 1905, its generators were the largest of their kind and the Canadian Niagara Power Company used them to harness the energy created by Horseshoe Falls. That energy was turned into power to supply both Fort Erie, Ontario and Buffalo, New York. After providing electricity for 100 years, the power station was decommissioned in 2006, and this year it reopened after it was brought back to life during a major renovation of the space with interactive exhibits, guided tours, and special events. Oh, that's fancy. Okay, so I somehow activated a training mode. I guess this is for good. Um, I don't know yet, but I'm learning about how to, I guess, turn on and off the power or something. Oh, I don't know. You got nine seconds. Okay. Don't mess up. You could shut the whole city down. Oh. So, you want to take over control. I love your enthusiasm, but we can't have rookies running things here. That was actually pretty cool. They were kind of creatively showing you how they produce power here and how it's not just so simple as just simply turning it on. You have to do all these various steps to prepare it in order to actually produce electricity. This is it. And the end of an era. <laughs> an era? Yeah, it was, a, a it was a month and a half. A month-long trip across Canada, and we didn't get to see everything we wanted to see. We'll definitely be back, but we got places to be, y'all. We left Niagara Falls, which was wonderful, on the, the Canada side, and we drove about three hours to Ottawa. Mm-hmm. Yep, we went to Ottawa because of Kevin and Ruth. So Kevin and Ruth are like the godfathers <laughs> of Mexico RVing, and they've been doing it for such a long period of time. And I am forever thankful for all the advice and inspiration that they provided uh, for us uh, going to Mexico. I, uh, I look to them a lot. They, they run a blog uh, and a very successful Facebook group. We'll have links in the description where you can check out both of them. And they're just such wonderful people. And we've been like Instagram friends with them for, for years. Yeah, a couple years now. And yep. so it just worked out that they're here. They're actually getting ready to go back to Europe because that's their next big endeavor is long term RV in Europe, which, as you guys know, is um, on our radar for the future. And so we had a lovely night here with them and just, you know, shared some wine and travel stories and all that good stuff. If we're at that same point in 15 or 16 years, I think we're doing pretty well. Definitely. Yeah. All right, so now it's on onto America. We're heading back to the USA. I, I feel like we gotta do the hoo 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 thing or whatever, but it's, you know. Um, no. So we're gonna stop for the night probably near Syracuse because we're cutting back over to go to Niagara Falls on the US side because we wanna kind of do like a compare and contrast of the two. Um, and then we'll be making our way south. 
Yep. And stay tuned. We have <laughs> new adventures. New adventures ride. that are, I mean, this is some seriously exciting stuff, y'all. And I can't wait for us to be able to share it with you. All right, ready? Okay. Let's yes. roll. This route crosses the country border, verified COVID-19 border restrictions before going. Caitlin, we're going back to the U.S. <laughs> Chipotle. I have missed you so much. I have gone months and months because there's no Chipotle in Alaska. Obviously no Chipotle in Canada. Well, not obviously. Obviously. They would probably, I think Canadians would love Chipotle. Hey, there isn't any. Yeah. And there's one in 30 minutes at home. <laughs> Same falls, different side. We've made it all the way back around to Niagara Falls, but this time we're in the US. I've That's noticed right. already that this side seems to be a lot more touristy. The Canadian side is touristy, yes, but it just is a different level here in New York. I would agree, and I would also say that this seems a lot more walkable. I get the impression yeah. that there's kind of, because of that hillside in Canada, you're either up or you're down. You know, it's kind of not both. Um, so we try to do, I think, our best with the parking arrangements on the Canada side. But over here, it does seem like everything is pretty flat and all on the same level. There is free parking once you drive into the park, like along the river. But if you keep coming, we wanted to be closer to all the action and everything like that. It was 15 bucks because it's a weekend, otherwise $10 during the weekday to park in that lot. Not too bad. First, we're going to get some lunch. Yeah. And there are tons of food trucks and quick serve restaurants all in this area. Hey, you gotta go big, right? <laughs> My goodness. All right. What can I take? Wow. Yeah. Well, those look awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm excited. The lunch was delicious. Now we're heading to Made in the Mist. I learned my lesson on the Canadian side on how wet you get. I think we're gonna get even more wet this time. So we brought our rain jackets. Like under the ponchos for like double protective. Ready to get wet? Okay, well I think first uh, we're gonna do the observation deck. I have no idea besides the fact that it's an observation deck. Uh, but from what I understand, part of the cost of this is to pay for the elevator ride that takes you down to where the boats depart. Yeah, $1.25. Oh man, look. Caitlin, it's all the way down there. Oh my God. I don't like being up this high. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Souvenir. <laughs> I'm ready. You can take a similar boat ride on the Canadian side. Their cruise is called Voyage to the Falls, but they weren't running them on the day we were there. And it's very easy to spot the difference in the water. The U.S. boats are decked out in blue ponchos, and the Canadian ships have bright red. This is really cool. <laughs> so glad we're doing this. Am I doing it right? Yeah. Ah. That's the American ball. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. It really is. Okay, Caitlin, any last words before we get completely <laughs> inundated? I love you. I love you too. I'll never stop loving you. <laughs> this is great! <laughs> well, it's getting rough! Oh, well, like, brace yourself! It's like being in a hurricane! How you doing, Caitlin? <laughs> it's so funny because everybody just laughs and then you hear, like, whoa! It's the boat <laughs> Oh, there was an hour-long tour. I don't think I need to be on here. 
Yeah, yeah me neither. I will say this though, the water is very fresh. <laughs> it feels like spring water. There's our shower today. Yeah, who needs a shower anymore? Oh man. That was fun. I'm so glad we did this. We did it. We survived and made it a mess. <laughs> As millions of other people have before us. Caitlin, it's called the crow's nest. I don't know what crow would want to live here. I don't either, but I'm thinking that this means it's a precipice of rock that probably overlooks oh. the falls and oh no. Oh no. Alright, here we go. <laughs> visiting the crow's nest, uh, we are making the decision that we do not need to go to the cave of the wind <laughs> because we have gotten plenty soaked. There is a lot of water in my shoes right now. Yeah, it's like walking on a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I am in need of So now you can buy flip flops. Oh. You can have those for sale before. Oh man, you can get your made of the mist flip flops. I don't think my waterproof mascara could withstand the power of the water at Niagara Falls. Let's see. Well, yeah, this might be too close, but let's see. Uh, that's it. I don't know. Sorry, everybody. That was I don't know. Awesome. Okay, Howard. Yeah. Final answer. Uh huh. Which do you think is better, the Canada side or the U.S. Side? Oh, that's like picking any fill in the blank. <laughs> of your favorite. Yeah. You gotta have one. I would say, oh, this is so hard. I'm gonna say absolutely nothing because we wanna know what you think of the two sides of Niagara Falls. So tell us in the comments, would you recommend the USA or Canada for someone visiting the area? Caitlin's reply isn't spilling the beans either. My recommendation is if you can do both, do both because they are different experiences. And I think that it rounds out the Niagara Falls my final answer. But we're gonna leave you here because we have to get all the way down to Virginia for our next big adventure. You're not gonna guess, or will you guess, where we're heading to next? Stay tuned. Get ready to come along for an epic December. Join us Sundays for an incredible Italian adventure as we crisscross the boot of Europe. Plus, every Thursday, get holly jolly with us for the second season of Christmas in the South. You won't want to miss what we have in store, so make sure to subscribe and click the bell to join in on all the fun. We'll see you soon from Florence, Italy.